Marauders, welcome back to the channel. Dilly dilly disorder. I get it this time of year, something fierce. The van wives would know. Never knew what it was called until I watched her channel. I'm in the dungeon doing a job that I've been putting off for a while. My wife has been asking me to do it. Her and my son have used every weapon they have to get me to get in the basement and put the sump pump in, including saying, why don't you make a video while you're doing it? I was gonna make a video of it anyways. So let's just look what we have here. Years ago, I piped my sump pump pit with two half horsepower sump pumps. 18 years ago, I set this up with two separate inch and a half pipes going up outside to a six inch pipe. And the two pipes go into the six inch pipe at an angle like a manifold. So I did not tie two half horsepower sump pumps into one inch and a half pipe. Then a period, I don't know, years later, I had so many problems with these check valves that I went to the quiet check valve. And these are awesome because they're a screwed on fitting because I had check valves that would go bad and the sump pump couldn't open the check valve to pump water out and that was creating a flooding or an issue with the sump pump. So I went with these quiet check valves that are very easy to change and they're just simply outstanding. Again, they're a threaded connection. You undo the thread, you can pull the check valve out and replace it. Doesn't require a lot of work to change the check valve. So I did that years ago. Then prior to finish seeing the basement, I had a friend help me rework the piping all together, neaten the pipes up, and I tried a Zoller sump pump. He was a big fan of Zoller pumps, which is a good cast iron pump. I also had a backup Liberty pump. So we put the Zoller pump in, installed that, and then we installed the Liberty pump in. I had that new, and we got it set up with a really nice configuration configuration. Well, the Sol Zoller sump pump really did, I had them set offset. The Zoller would kick on first and then the Liberty. The Zoller pump wore out after probably about six years and he had to re be replaced. And by the way, it set off the alarm like it usually does, right? At least I was home, but it was in the middle of the night that the pump was overflowing. I had to dismantle it. I have a float alarm in there. I don't know if you can see it down in there. I'll give you a look at it a little bit later when I'm done. Very easily, I unthreaded both pumps, took them out, spun the, this one was definitely dead. Spun the blade on the Liberty pump, stuck it back in, plugged it in. And the Liberty pump's been working for, I'd say at least six months, pumping the water. And I get a lot of water in that pump at certain times, like the thaw cycle during the winter. I really like the Liberty pump for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's slightly more compact, the footprint of it. Install a new half horsepower Liberty pump. And here it is, cast iron beast. It's a half horsepower, eight amps. And I'm gonna install this in the sump pump, which isn't easy because this was set up. I only have so much room in that sump pump to do this. Give you a look, get some light. I only have so much room in this sump pump to do this. And I have to get output, I have to rotate this pump in the pit to get the output lined up directly with the plumbing I had, the way I laid out the piping for the, the Zoller pump. So I have to rotate this to get it lined up. If it's slightly off center, it's gonna come in at an angle and I don't want that to happen. This is roughly the orientation it's gonna have in the sump. That's roughly the orientation. And what I like about it is the float will be in the center of the sump pump. And that way, the float won't hit the sidewalls. I've actually seen where the float just touches the sidewall of the sump pit after a while, and it won't turn, the can't float can't raise, it won't turn on the sump pump, and then you have flooding. Listen how quiet this is. Quiet, isn't it, for check valve? I used to hear those rattle all the way on the second floor when they'd shut off. So I really like that check valve. That's what I'm gonna do in this video. If you're interested in installing a sump pump, my son might come in and help me with it. But I'll see if I can get the sump pump installed and get it hooked up and running. Not looking forward to it, but it's one of those jobs you gotta do, right? Okay, we're gonna put the adapter on. Okay, so the adapter's on. 
which adapts the cast iron pump housing to the inch and a half PVC pipe. And I'm gonna set this in the crock hole. Another reason why I put this off is because of my knee. Actually, that looks not bad. That looks not bad. Okay, let's get this pipe, give you an orientation look. And the pit. And I'm not gluing this, I'm gonna dry fit it. We'll have a little leeway in and out. This is the threaded insert, which is gonna be glued onto the PVC. And off of that, we're gonna have a 90 that's gonna go on the top of this pipe. So let's let's see if I have another piece of pipe I can stick on here. Actually, the alignment looks really good on this. Let's tip this out of the way. So we have this pipe coming across. And it should look something, let's say we're going to hold it just upright like that. But I'm laying out the pipe to get a rough eyeball angle on how much I want to cut. I'm going to mark it. So, so that's going to be the approximate mark here. And I'm going to go three quarters of an inch past that. This is not a how-to video. This is not a how-to video. <laughs> Don't watch it if you think this is a how-to video. Please. So the overlap on that 90 degree is roughly three quarters of an inch. So that's how I'm going to cut this pipe. Three quarters of an inch beyond. Let's see how I do. If I can get this done the first time. I'm going to sand that rough stuff off a little bit. Okay, so let's put this up. It actually looks long. Not a good job. Let's reload on this. Someone forgot to turn the camera on. I really like this. This is dry fit. What's nice about this connection is I can unthread this, take this all out of the pit, dry it off, glue it together, get this all glued up, one end of that, and I'll glue this piece to the adapter on the pump, then the 90 on, then this short piece of pipe, then the threaded connection. I can put it in the sump pit and thread it on, and it should be, I don't have to wrestle trying to set different pieces. And I'll show you. I'm gonna unthread this connection. And then this whole assembly will come out. You can see the threaded assembly. I need to drill a small hole in the side of this PVC pipe just above this adapter collar. They recommend it so you don't get an airlock on the pump. So they recommend drawing an eighth inch hole. And I'm going to do it about there. And I'm going to have it off to the side a little bit. Eighth inch hole, let's prime this. And we're going to put it in so we give it a little twist. I'm going to glue this on, put it in the hole. Oh, I'm loving life. Guys, we did it. I'm going to unplug my, I'm going to plug the new pump in and I'll leave the pump on. You'll probably hear it run in a second. See if we have any leaks. Well, she's going to run soon. Also, I forgot to take a sticker off. Not sure what that gurgling was, but we'll keep an eye on it. That might have been that weep hole or getting the air out of the system because it ran for the first time. We'll see. But you run, no leaks, guys. No leaks whatsoever on it. I'm going to take that as a win. So I zip tie. Sometimes I use electrical tape. Lately I've been using zip ties to zip tie the cord tight up against the pipe with a little slack in it for the pump. It's not too tight. There's a little slack down there. Um, I like to leave some slack in here in case I ever have to disassemble the pump and pull it out like I did when the previous pump stopped running. But I zip tie it up and then it crosses over. Each are on a separate circuit. Pump number one was the original pump. Then this was the second pump I've added. I think those are two separate 20 amp circuits, which you know are tied to my Generac generator, which powers the whole house. And I believe I have two switch gears. Those, those, these boxes, there's one over on the other side. Those are two switch gears to switch over the power in an emergency. So it's hooked up. That's it. If you can see over on this side, deep down in there, I have a flow switch. 
that if the, I'm sorry, uh, uh, an overflow alarm acts like a float on a toilet, the water comes up too high, that will rotate up and set the alarm off and call the alarm company. Over here, I think they call them, that's a floor cricket. The water gets around the floor and hits that cricket. That will go off. We should be set, marauders. That's it. The sump pump's in. And we'll see. We're supposed to... There's actually tornado warnings in our area for tomorrow, which is rare. So we're getting a lot of rain tonight. And tomorrow we're going to get tornado warnings in western New York, which is rare for our area. All right, marauders. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, this is not a how-to video. This is how I just maintain my house and stumble through it. One other thing I want to point out is, I don't know if I mentioned it previously, I like to have those, the pipe, she's running. Now, that gurgling, I don't know if that's that air lock that's venting the air out of it. Um, please comment and let me know. I'm not sure, I've never drilled a hole in a pipe, the directions did call for it, to drill that hole so you don't have an airlock, and I don't know if that's what that sound is, if that's what's going on there. I don't I don't think the check valve's bad, and by the way, it's very easy to change these if it is, so I don't think this check valve's bad, but I, I don't remember hearing that sound with another sump pump. Okay, you can see no gurgling. Watch when I let my thumb off that, that uh, airlock. Eighth inch hole I drilled. Watch when I pull it off. Then I can hear the gurgling. I don't know if I should have put that, that hole on further directions. So even though these are some pumps from the same manufacturer, they're set at the same height, this pump is now running, kicking on before the older pump. And eventually I need to switch out the older pump and I'll have that as a backup and retire it. But they seem to be, everything seems to be running okay. Seems to be working. That should make my wife happy. This is done. Marauders, that's it. Take care, thank you for watching the video. I don't know if you're gonna enjoy this video, but you'll see how I put in a sump pump. A biggest thing, I like Liberty Pump, Zoller is a great pump very heavy duty and i really like these these quiet check valves really am a fan of those very easy to change them just unthread it pull it out and put a new one in thread it back up very easy to change them thanks marauders from the the dungeon in my house trying to get rid of this dilly dally disorder <laughs> i certainly got it thank you Way up there.